Hi folks, lots to share in this week's vlog. We've not actually brought you a vlog for a good few weeks now and that is partly because I went away for a few days and also because we've just been kind of moving with the seasons and slowing down and just listening to our bodies a little bit as well and taking things a little bit slower. There is still lots to be done around here and lots that we have been doing as well. So we're gonna share a bit more on that in this video. We've been upgrading our solar system, installing a new log burner in our food store. And right now I am just having a little bit of a tidy up in our growing beds so that I can put some frost cloths on things like our beetroot and maybe our turnips as well because we've actually got our first frost due this weekend. I'm also going to get a good harvest of beetroot because we've still got loads of them and that will give me lots of things to work with if I don't feel like going out in the cold over the next few days. Today is a super exciting day because we are doing what will hopefully be our final upgrade on our solar system for a while and that is we are connecting up our lithium batteries as we've only been running on lead acid for quite a long time now and this system was actually only bought to run a pond pump and we have been using it for way more and slowly upgrading the system as our needs have changed. So we've got eight panels and that is giving us about 2.5 uh, kilowatts currently. And yeah, other than the batteries just not holding enough power for us, the system has been doing really, really well. Um, but the new batteries are gonna be amazing. So this is our current setup, our lead acid batteries and our charge controller which is also an inverter that is what we're running off well, we've got a few other bits and pieces in here from um, the original setup that yeah like I said we've upgraded over time all right so our first job is to come in here and turn off or isolate the power coming in from the solar panels and the battery um, which I can do by turning these bits off here So that should be the power of the panels and then I can turn the batteries off for this one. Okay so Dan is now disconnecting our old batteries. Dan is now linking our two 12 volt lithium batteries together so they're going to be ran in series and this will make them 24 volts. So just as a check before I connect them up to make sure that they are connected together in series correctly, instead of 12 volts now or 13, this should show, yeah, 27.7. So yeah, that's good. They are connected in series. Right, we've got power to our charge controller inverter again. And then we can turn our solar panels back on up here. We should see those connecting now. Usually takes a second. Right, yep. okay. So it now says we're charging, so let's have a look through here. It's saying that we have 27.8 volts on our batteries. The battery is showing as fully charged here as well, so that's good. Now I'll see if I can change the settings. Just to tell it that we've now got lithium batteries, 
instead of less lead acid batteries. Okay, so that is our new lithium batteries installed and we are really happy to say it was actually a really simple changeover, um, which is awesome because most jobs usually end up being a lot more difficult than we expect. But one of the main reasons why we wanted to change over is because the old lead acid style batteries tend to drop off really quickly um, as you're using the power whereas these lithium batteries give us a much more stable power that we can discharge right down to about 10%, whereas the lead acid, you have to keep at 50% at the lowest. And the other cool thing is these times are about three times the capacity of our old batteries. So I think we've got up to 1,200 watts of storage in these batteries. No, 12,000. Oh, 12,000, 12,000 watts of storage in these batteries. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> and one of the other jobs that we got finished over the last couple of weeks was the install of this beautiful fireplace into our food store and workshop space. And we're using this fire in here just to keep the ambient temperature of this shed up so that our crops in here don't freeze. And in the future, we are probably going to build some racks or something over it as well so we can use it as a drying space and just try and maximize the use of it. We have insulated this shed now this year. Last year it wasn't insulated and it did freeze in here although we did have a colder winter than we normally do. And Dan has done an amazing job with this fireplace. He has built all of this beautiful rock hearth himself. all of the in-store himself. And it is all done to the UK standard code. It's got the right angle bends in it, the right distance away from the wall, and it's got the twin wall flue going through the wall all exactly as it should be and this fire is absolutely cranking out the heat right now we actually got given the fireplace by our neighbors who are completely refitting out the house that um, is closest to our land here and so yeah it was an awesome freebie that we have put to really good use Okay, so today I'm going to be bottling half of my apple cider vinegar and this has been sat here strained since the 5th of October, so almost six weeks now. It's the 18th of November today and you can see this white film on top is what you call a SCOBY. And that is really good because the SCOBY is the culture that gives a lot of the goodness to this raw apple cider vinegar. So really happy to see that there. That's awesome. So we'll just give it a little taste. Yep, that's pretty sharp. and then we'll get it in the bottles. And I've got all of my bottles here, which I've sterilized in the oven for 20 minutes. And I've also boiled off all the lids to make sure they're nice and clean because this beautiful apple cider vinegar is something that can last for a good few years. So if you don't use it already, so I don't want any contamination in the lids. And the other vat of apple cider vinegar that I've got, I will hopefully be turning into fire cider tomorrow. And apple cider vinegar is great for so many things. And if you'd like to hear a little bit more, check out the video that I made in September when I brewed up the apple cider vinegar and I talk a little bit more about some of the health benefits there.
So you may have seen me inoculating all of these logs in the vlog that I made back in May. And these logs have stayed up in our old shed, sheltered and shaded from the sun since then. But I have been meaning to get them out for at least four weeks now since I've seen so many mushrooms and mycelium popping up everywhere. I felt it was definitely time that these logs started to get rained on and absorb some more moisture. And we are really determined to grow mushrooms here and give ourselves a good supply because mushrooms is literally the only vegetable that we still buy in but it is all very new to us and we are still learning. So if any of you guys have any tips as to whether this is the right thing to be doing with these logs right now, we would massively appreciate them. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed seeing what we've been up to today. Thank you so much for watching as always. Thank you to our Patreons as well. We massively appreciate your extra support. If you've enjoyed the video as always, click the thumbs up button down below. This really helps to get our videos seen by more people. Drop us comments in the questions and questions down below and we will catch you here again soon. Thanks for watching. Peace and plants.